We read in Luke chapter 2, verse 14, these famous Christmas words spoken by angels to some shepherds near Bethlehem more than 2,000 years ago. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. You know, Christmas cards and most little ornaments separate these as if they were two unrelated phrases. So we get cards that simply read, peace on earth. Seen those cards? And we have these little Christmas ornaments on our Christmas trees that read, peace on earth. But there will be no peace on earth until people also say, glory to God in the highest. See, the root problem behind the lack of peace is that our lives were created to revolve around God. God is the center, and we human beings were designed, we were engineered to be like planets that revolve around the sun. But instead, each of us demands to be the center around which the rest of life, including God, must revolve. We demand that other people and even God serve us and orient their lives around us, around our needs, around our wants. The Apostle Paul wrote these words about Jesus in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. He, that is Jesus himself, is our peace. I want to make one simple point this Advent. There is one thing that a person can never have apart from Christ, and that is peace. He is our peace. We can have success. We can have a big bank account. Lots of people do. We can have sex. But we cannot have peace unless we get off the throne and we ask Jesus to be the Lord of our lives, unless we stop demanding our own way and we begin to live life, allowing Christ to call the shots, permitting Christ to have his way in our lives, there will be no peace because he is our peace. See, Jesus Christ came into the world for one central purpose, to make peace. Peace between God and us, peace between us and each other, The prophet Isaiah prophesied a day when this world would be governed by the Prince of Peace. Oh, that'll be the day. The Prince of Peace, or the Messiah, would not only restore proper order to society, but he would remove the peace-shattering effects of our sin by suffering in our place. Listen to these words of Isaiah regarding the Messiah. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. How did Jesus, the Prince of Peace, make peace between God and us? Isaiah tells us God laid our sin on Christ, who became our sin bearer. Jesus carried away our sins. It's because he has done that, that God can look with favor at us and pardon and forgive us our sins. It's because God's judgment on our sin has been satisfied by the death of Christ, that God can now be at peace with anyone who looks to Christ in repentant faith. That's what the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Christmas is all about God's plan to establish peace with us through the life, death, and resurrection of his son Jesus. God wants us to have peace within ourselves as we're filled with the Spirit of God and to spread peace through us as we live God-surrendered lives that give glory to God. Let's pray. Lord, I know that you came 
at Christmas to give me peace. And I pray right now that you would fill my heart with peace. Lord, I look to you. Please remove sin from me. I choose by faith to place my sin upon Jesus. Remove my sin. And Lord, this day, make me a peacemaker. Help me to spread peace in my relationships and in my world. In Jesus' name.